Hello and welcome to Let's Play Space Quest 3, The Pirates of Pestilon. When we last left Roger Wilco, he was adrift in space in an escape pod, running out of air. Let's see if we can't improve his situation, shall we? Space Quest 3 doesn't quite take us back to the level of technology of the Space Quest 1 remake, but we do at least have real music again. As always, I will record the music using my Roland MT32, so you can experience it the way it was meant to sound. So, let's begin! It has been an indeterminate amount of time since Roger Wilco rocketed away from Volhall's burning space fortress. Time stands still for our hero in suspended animation. Its engines long spent, the small escape pod drifts aimlessly through unfamiliar star fields, its course altered many times by small asteroids and space debris. Inside, Roger lies undisturbed in his sleep chamber. But not for long. Obviously, otherwise it would be a boring game. Hmm, seems something has taken an interest in our little pod. The pod, considered to be nothing more than another piece of scrap, is taken aboard a robot-commanded garbage freighter. Unfortunately, these robots have no regard for organics. That seems like a design oversight. The small pod is jarred by a sudden shock which triggers the sleep chamber's revive mode. As the glass shroud slides back, Roger slowly begins to regain consciousness. W where am I? Some of you may remember there being digital speech for that particular line. Unfortunately, unlike newer Sierra games, this game does not have the ability to use the MT-32 and the Sound Blaster at the same time, so it cannot give you any digital sound if you use the MT-32. You notice that the sounds from the pod grow softer until they are imperceptible. Having served its purpose and taxed its resources, the pod gives a final hum and shuts down. Fortunately though, that particular line of dialogue is the only digital sound in the entire game, so we won't be missing much. Well, there we are, aboard a garbage freighter. 
Well, it's a little bit better than being adrift in an escape pod running out of air. But obviously we are going to need a way off of this place. So let's see what we can do. If we check our inventory, we can see that we still have the glowing gem from the previous game. You are still carrying the piece of Orium you picked up on Labion during your last adventure. However, it has long since lost its glow. Then why is it still uh, described as glowing gem here? You can actually also, you don't have to type a uh, look for the uh, inventory items, you can also just use the arrow keys. Look at them like that. I guess the mouse would also work. Yes! You can also use the mouse to walk. I just prefer to use the keyboard for these games. Because you still need to type anyway to do stuff. So it's easier if you don't constantly have to switch between keyboard and mouse. Let's see where we are. You're standing in a debris cut cluttered junk bay. An escape pod rests in the middle of the room. There are chunks of metal lying around, which seem to be small sections of old spaceware. Let's look at the pod. Okay. Um. This is the escape pod which safely whisked you away from Vohol's burning asteroid fortress. The skin of the pod plainly registers the, registers the cumulative damage long periods of space travel can inflict on small craft such as this. Well, I can't really tell from this uh, angle, but anyway. Uh, well, most of the other stuff on this screen seems to be junk. Although there is a very conspicuous round object on the floor here. The floor is composed of a mosaic of overlapping welded steel plates. The menage of used steel pla metal plates appear to have been cut from a variety of sources. There's a small round object lying nearby. Okay, let's look at the object. A closer look at the object on the floor reveals that it is a warp motivator. It looks a bit more high-tech than the other junk strewn about this locale. Sturdily constructed, its only protrusion is a modular plug near its base. How can you tell? Um, can we take that with us? Looks a bit big, but that's never stopped us before. While relatively small, it seems to be quite dense. I think we're looking at a potential hernia if any attempts are made to manually re relocate it. Okay, well that seems that we have to find another way to relocate it. Well, let's check out some other areas of this place. Like down here. Various types of abandoned spacecraft litter the floor of this intergalactic junkyard. All this place needs is a junkyard dog. You shiver at the thought. Yeah, rather not have one of those around here. Hey look, it's a TIE Fighter. Let's see if we can look at that. This bulbous craft looks like it has seen a lot of action in its day. You believe it to be a bow TIE Fighter, dating back to the Cologne Wars. A true relic. Ha ha ha. Bow TIE Fighter, that's obvious, and Cologne Wars is a play on Clone Wars. Even though this game obviously predates the Star Wars sequels, Clone Wars were mentioned in the very first Star Wars movie, so that's what they're referencing here. And there's an Acme rocket. This ship is another fine but worthless Acme product. What, did Wily e. Coyote uh, use it? And this... Could it be? The ship says Jupiter 2. This baby must have been floating around out here for a long time. It doesn't hold your interest for very long. Well, it sort of resembles the ship from Lost in Space, but I think that was a Jupiter 5, if I'm not mistaken. Although I could be. Well, not much else here. 
So let's uh, head to right here, but I'm afraid that we'll have to do that in the next video. Welcome back. We are on a garbage freighter. And we need to get off it, obviously. There's one feature of this game that I'd like to show you, actually. Here in the menu, you can find something called Boss Key. Well, uh, some games of this era actually had a function called a boss key. What this basically does is either it um, throws up a shell, a DOS shell, or it shows something that looks like um, something you might be using for work, like a spreadsheet or something, to give your boss the impression that you're doing work rather than playing a game if uh, he or she happens to be passing. What this game does, however, is slightly different. Oh, I get it. You don't want your boss to know you've been playing Space Quest 3. In fact, you don't want your boss to know that you've been playing Space Quest 3 for 0 hours, 7 minutes and 7 seconds. That's a good idea, but I'm afraid that, being the good company men that we are, we can't help you cheat like that. Sorry. Okay. It also has something called Vapor Calc, which is apparently an abacus. Not a functional one, though. Can't use it. No idea what purpose that serves. Oh well, let's work on uh, getting out of here. Let's see, there's the other end of the Jupiter 2. And some kind of garbage elevator. You're overwhelmed by the variety of space trash around each corner. A large bucket conveyor carries shredded ships to a horizontal conveyor, high above. Okay. Look, a robot arm. Somewhere there's an oversight android missing a limb. Quiet. Unless the rest of that oversized android is also around here somewhere. Well, let's uh, see if we can get off this screen. Hmm, not this way, apparently. Seems like the only way to get off this screen is back to where we came, or by using the conveyor. I'm sure that will end perfectly fine. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit. Okay, horizontal conveyor, I wonder where that goes. Uh-oh, not good, not good! Fortunately, this game gives you time to type. Also, you can just walk in the opposite direction. Obviously, we can't do that for uh, forever, so let's jump onto this metal beam here. Okay, well, we're somewhere else at least. But what now? It's a long way down from here. Let's uh, head left. Uh, that's a little bit too fast, actually. I don't want to increase my chances of falling down. Hmm, nothing much of interest here. You're standing on a narrow rail suspended high above the floor of the freighter. It's a long way down to the junk piles below. There are two passages to the west. Well, let's see, that should take us somewhere else. Oh, looks like we have some kind of cart attached to the rail here, as well as a robot. Possibly the robot we saw in the introduction. In this room, the rail makes a U-turn. There's a machine here which hangs under the rail. There's a chute at the bottom. In the middle are panels of monitoring devices being tended to by a droid. It's not a model you've seen before. The droid appears to be dedicated to his workstation. It seems harmless enough. Yeah. It's still Sierra game, so I'm not sure if it really is harmless. 
So what I'm interested in, however, is um, what's down this chute that the uh, description mentioned, down at uh, the bottom here in the middle. However, we can't get there directly. What we need to do to get there is climb down into this thing. Plopping into the seat, you grasp the forward-backward control of the grabber. It's a grabber, apparently. Your view of the grabber from here reveals a forward reverse control stick, currently grasped, and a button marked claw. Sounds as if this thing could be used to uh, pick stuff up from the floor of the uh, freighter, like perhaps that warp motivator. But since we don't know what to do with it yet, I'm just going to check out this chute. Uh, it actually makes the beep sound only when you're reversing. What purpose that serves, I don't know, because, well, there's never anyone behind you. Okay, let's climb out and head down to shoot. Sure, it'll end well. I think the robot kills you if you uh, hang around there too long. Fortunately, you come to a relatively soft landing in a pile of debris. Hmm. What the hell are those things? Rats? That does not seem good. Especially not with the Jaws music playing. You seem to be in a debris enclosed hollow. Poking out of the ceiling is the chute which you originally entered through. Some crusty lamps linked by non-UL approved wire provide additional illumination. How about the rats? Can Roger even see them? You can hear something scurrying around above you. You can't actually see the rats because they're hidden in the shadows. Oh, okay. Let's look at these lights. The aging lamps add extra light to the arena, uh, to the area. Overused wires link them to power. Some brittle looking wire runs from lamp to lamp and then disappears into a hole to the left. Ooh, I'm interested in that. You peer into the small opening and notice a tiny reactor which seems to be providing power for the lights. I want that. You unhook the reactor from the cheap wires and take it with you. Which, of course, turns off the lights. Let's hope those uh, rats aren't going to pound me now. What's this thing? In one of the piles you notice a severed wing and some empty cowlings of different shapes and sizes. The items were probably being readied for whatever destructive processing is done aboard this heap. Okay, well, not useful then. There's a ladder over there. That could be our ticket out of here. Hey, we're back here. Bending aside a thin piece of scrap, you find an opening into another area and climb on in. Now, one thing you want to do here is take the ladder with you. How he does that, don't ask me. You grab the ladder and jam it into your pocket. Ouch. Indeed. Those are some big pockets. Those aren't pockets, he's got the TARDIS in his pants. Um, well, let's check what other areas we can find on this ship. There's that warp motivator again, which we may be able to pick up with the grabber. But we need to find out where to take it first. Let's see. Oh, it looks like a skeleton of one of those rats over there. You're quite impressed by the size of this junk freighter. The skeletal remains of a stripped-down space tanker staged lie half buried in scrap. Not much remains. If there was anything of value, it was stripped away a long time ago. Um... Can we see the rat? No. Nope. Well, let's head to the right into this tanker thingy. Hmm. Someone, or something, has done a real job on this tanker. Was this the result of some space battle? Or perhaps you're not the only one running around in here? Perhaps. Looks like there's some wires around here. Except for the one on the left, most of the wires here look dangerously worn. 
Well, wire is always a useful thing to have, so let's take these wires. These are apparently the only usable ones. You take the only decent piece of wire available. Uh, help! No! Oh, Biff! Let's turn into uh, Adam West Batman. You seem to have been mocked by some type of large rat. As you pick loose fur from your teeth, you notice a less bulky feeling. Yes, all we're left with is the gem and the ladder. Seems like the rats didn't appreciate us taking their generator. As well as the wire, it seems. But, uh, we'll have to deal with getting those back in the next video. Welcome back. We've just been mugged by a rather large rat. It didn't seem to have done, uh, doesn't seem to have done any other damage. We're just um, down some inventory items. All we have left is the jam and the ladder. This is the ladder. The evenly spaced rungs allow altitude adjustment. Yes, that's usually what ladders are for. Now we'll worry about getting that stuff back later. Well, let's first check out what's to the right of here. We actually also lost points when they took away all this stuff. Uh, that sucks, because I like points. Let's see. Looks like a robot hat. The gutted carcass of the tanker opens up to reveal even more junk. A metal head rests nearby. Is the head of Voltron? Wow, an ancient model of a battle bot. I bet you'd hate to run into whatever brought this big f guy down. It looks like something poked it in the eye. You can actually uh, climb down that eye. That leads us to another area where it seems there is a spaceship of some kind embedded in the floor. That's interesting, because we need a way off this heap. You find yourself at the bottom of another trash pit. An interesting array of alien artifacts is strewn from one end to the other. A large ship is in the middle, and a small one is off to the side. I think they're talking about uh, this thing here. Looks like there's some Lego bricks over on the side. And a satellite made of Swiss cheese. Uh, let's look at this thing. It's a cute little thing. You've never seen anything like it in these parts. But then, where are these parts? Some writing on its exterior reads, Bowman was here. Yes, it's the part from 2001. Let's look at this ship. Looks more interesting. It's a sleek looking number if you can disregard the junk it's rooted in. It must be a recent addition to the collection, as everything seems to be intact. Etched on each side is the name Aluminum Mallard. On top is a small hatch. Aluminum Mallard, obviously a play on Millennium Falcon. Although I think Falcon is rather a bit cooler than a duck. But anyway. Seems like the only way in is that hatch. Let's see if we can look at some of the other stuff here. They look like remnants of an orbital space station, or perhaps some type of toys for an oversized child. If that's the case, I don't want to meet them. Nope. Same reaction. Okay, let's see if we can get on top of this ship. You're not in a good location for climbing that. like we're gonna need some help. Well, we have a ladder. And well, let's climb that. You notice it to be slick up here. Be careful. And yes, of course, still a Sierra game. They mean it. You can fall off. Fortunately, all you really need to do is uh, head a little bit to the left so you can open the hatch. You move into position and, grabbing the dull finish of the hatch's handle, commence to open and enter the ship. 
see if this baby can take us out of here. In that case, we don't even need all the stuff the rats took from his back. Looks interesting. At first, you are surprised at how intact the ship's interior is. Immediately to your right is a panel with a red button. At the midship on the right wall is the ship's main diagnostic computer. Directly across are two passenger seats. Ahead of you is the cockpit. Hmm. What does the button do? The button is clearly labeled Ramp Open Close. Ah, uh, well, we don't want to go outside right now. Besides, I think the ramp is embedded in junk anyway. Let's look at the monitor. It's the diagnostics monitor. So maybe it can tell us if the ship is working. Power critically low. Auxiliary reactor not online. Does not even have enough energy to actually run the self-diagnostic. Looks like there's a panel open on the left. The access panel has been removed to reveal an empty reactor compartment. Hmm. Well, the diagnostic says the AUX reactor is offline. And there's a panel here into which we can fit a reactor. If only we had one. Which we don't. Which means we need to go and get it back. So, let's uh, open the hatch again. The ramp is immobilized by the junk it's laying in, so you exit through the hatch instead. Yes, I already typed that. And let's climb back down the ladder. We want to go back to um, the place where we got the reactor. You grab the ladder and jam it in your pocket. Ouch, again. So, let's take the ladder with us, so we can get there. And climb back up. Hey, what happened to the music? Oh. And it came back. The annoying thing is I also took our wire. And there is no other usable wire here, so hopefully we can find that again somewhere. Um, am I moving? Okay, now I am. Sometimes it keeps moving if you switch screens, and sometimes it doesn't, which does not help things. Alright, let's put the ladder back, which costs its points, but anyway, we'll take it back later. And climb down, and it seems that the rats have reattached the generator. Man, those are some smart rats. So, let's uh, get the reactor. You want to hook the reactor from the cheap wires and take it with you. And we also need to oh, uh, get our wires back from here. And you can see currently the rats are not watching us, so they don't know we've taken the reactor. Um, what the hell am I typing? So this time, we should be fine. Well, let's hope this is the only thing this ship needs. Now let's hope it works. I mean, it's just some random reactor we found somewhere in this uh, garbage freighter. It's not as if it's uh, this actually a part meant for that ship. Unless they took it from that ship, which I suppose is a possibility. Let's head back into the ship. Yes, 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 we know it's slick. All 
Alright, let's install that reactor. You drop the reactor into the hole. In attempting to reconnect the cables, you find that one is much too short. Hmm. Fortunately, we have uh, wires. You carefully connect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back in place once you've finished. Yay! Let's look at the diagnostic monitor now. Um, I think just monitor will do. Power level nominal! Aux reactor online! Auxiliary reactor! Nominal! That's good. Landing gear! Nominal! Warp motivator! Unit not installed! Hmm. That's not a good thing. But we have seen a motivator. So I guess we should go and get it. Yes, the ramp is still immobilized, I know. There's a conveniently shaped hole on the back of the ship. You peer into the cavity in the top of the ship. The only noteworthy item is a modular plug in the bottom of the opening. And if you remember when we looked at the warp motivator originally, it said that it had... Um, Um, a modular plug on the bottom. So I guess that hole is where to put the warp motivator. Which means we get to go back to the grabber. But we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back! We have found a ship in need of a warp motivator, and it just so happens we know where to find one. Namely, off to the left here. But since we cannot move it manually, we'll need to get uh, the grabber. Again, I don't know if I'm moving. Now I am. <coughs> the grabber will be able to move this thing to where we need it. You may have noticed in the previous video that I took the ladder with me again. And that's very important, even though we're not actually going to go down from here. this thing to take us back up. And then... <coughs> we have to quickly stand and jump again. To avoid getting shredded. This beam looks really narrow. I don't think I would actually dare to walk on it like that. But it seems Roger does not suffer from vertigo. Alright, let's climb into... Oh, climb into the uh, grabber before the droid notices us. Plopping into the seat, you grasp the forward-backward control of the grabber. And we are pretty much only going to go backwards, so we get to have the uh, beep, beep, beep the whole time. And this is where the warp motivator is. I think it's around here. So let's push the button for the, the claw. It seems that it's... Attached by, I don't know, a tractor beam or something. Because there's no cable. And it looks like I got the spot right. It's not actually all that uh, touchy. The claw senses contact with the warp motivator. 
grasps it firmly and begins the ascent back to the grabber. It's not like you need to be in exactly the right position, you just need to be on the right side of the screen. Alright, now let's take it to where the ship is. And essentially each screen up here corresponds to a screen up um, at the top. F uh, up uh, there, down on the floor. And the back rails correspond to the back screens and the front rails correspond to the front screens, the forward screens, the south screens, whatever you want to call them. And I think this is just about where we need to be to lower the warp motivator into place. And if not, then we'll have to pick it up again. Nope, I got it right. Sensing an adequate surface, the claw releases its cargo and begins the ascent to the grabber unit. The object fuds into place with the, within the cavity of the ship. Good! So, we have to get off this thing, and the only way to do that is by going down the chute. Which is why we needed to take the ladder with us again. Because if you forgot that... Oh. Then you would be stuck down there. Damn it. There we go again. Still dark here. Fortunately, you come to a relatively soft landing in a pile of debris. The rats are still gone, I guess. Climb it and take it with us again. For the points and so we can actually get back into the ship, of course. Naturally, that you can do this much more quickly by just dropping the warp motivator in the ship to begin with the first time you get into the uh, grabber. But I am in the business of making let's plays, not speedruns. So I wanted to show you how you actually could solve this puzzle, as I always do. So you'd first need to know where to use it, before you can use it, of course. And I think that after this, our score will uh, no longer be going up and down by losing and gaining items. Uh, now we get the points back for putting it here, which we lost when we t take it away from here. I don't think we'll lose points again in this game. So let's get into the hatch. And let's just check with the diagnostics. To see if everything is working now. Yes, power level still nominal. I already know all this. An auxiliary reactor is nominal. Landing gear is nominal. And the warp motivator is also nominal. Looks like this bird's in good shape. Great, that means we can get out of here, hopefully. So, let's sit down. Take a look around here. You're sitting in the pilot seat of this sporty little ship. In front of you is a control panel, which contains a computer screen. 
Uh, let's search the seat. Searching around the cushions, you find, among variously colored wads of lint, seven buckazoids. Yay, we have money now. You possess seven of these nifty monetary units known as buckazoids. Obviously a play on the word buck. Trying to make it sound more... science fiction-y, I guess. Let's look at the monitor. Can we look out the window, actually? You can just see over the trash piled up against the cockpit window. Above you is the ceiling of the junk freighter. Alright, so... Let's look at the panel now. The control panel contains a computer screen. All ship systems are accessed through the pilot's computer. Look at the screen, then. Alright, let's see... We have um, engines and radar. I guess turning on the radar would be a good idea. Because if you don't, you'll just fly into the wall. And engines. Also a good idea. Adequate thrust achieved. Alright then, let's uh, take off. You feel a strong rumbling as the ship strains to loosen itself from the confines of the junk heap accumulated at its base. Finally, it begins to rise. The ship rises several meters, then stops abruptly. An alarm from the computer attracts your attention. Ascent halted due to obstruction. If you hadn't turned on the radar before taking off, then you would, in fact, have just crashed into the wall. So, let's uh, switch to the weapon system. Engage the front shields to protect us from any debris. And blast our way out of here. The shot blasts a new orifice in the side of the junk freighter. The pressure generated by the desire of the ship's atmosphere to escape to the considerably lower pressure of space causes your ship to be spit out like a watermelon seed. Yay! That means... that we're safe! Also, the owners of the garbage freighter are gonna be pissed. Anyway, we will continue in the next video. Let's see where we can go from here. Welcome back! We've made it off the freighter, but now what do we do? After all, we don't really have any objectives. There's no evil plot to stop, no bad guy to defeat. All we really uh, want to do is go home, I guess. Well, let's see where we can go with this ship. I'm sure that adventure will present itself at some point. Well, we don't need the weapon systems. Uh, we do sort of need the uh, navigation systems, I guess. See where we can go. For some reason, I really like this music. Simple though it may be. Well, we are there, apparently. Wherever the hell that is. Let's scan! Planet Ortega. Sector 82. Habitants unknown. Volcanic crater strewn surface. That doesn't sound very inviting, so let's resume scan. Name planet Fleabot. Yeah, I don't think I need to uh, explain the joke there. Sector 39, light atmosphere, one known settlement. Oh well, I guess that's better than nothing. Let's uh, set a course. Uh, I guess we should go to light speed. Punch it. Ooh. A ship is decloaking. That guy does not look friendly. Identity confirmed. Roger Wilco. Case something. Wilco wanted for vending machine fraud. 
Plaintiff Jipazoid Novelty Company. Judgment. Terminate. That's probably not a good thing. A flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. Orbiting planet Fleabut. That's almost as childish as orbiting Uranus. But anyway, um, I guess we should land. Hopefully that droid won't pose any trouble. With a mighty wump, you set down the aluminum mallard on the surface of Fleabut. Interesting looking place. Outside, the desert surface of Fleabut stretches into the distance. Countless eons of howling winds have carved this dry planet. Okay, well, I'm sure... That's just peachy. Let's get the hell out of here. This time via the ramp. As you step out of your ship onto the surface of Fleabot, you are hit in the face by the harsh winds. It looks like a storm is brewing. Meanwhile, another spacecraft touches down elsewhere on the very same planet. That doesn't look good. He's coming to get us. This Terminator looking guy. I think he's actually called Arnoid. And he can turn invisible. That's just peachy. As if we weren't in enough trouble already. But you may notice we can see him coming by his footprints. Alright, let's take a look around this place. Your ship is resting on a sandy spot between several large rocks. It looks like your automated landing system has done a remarkable job. Good thing we have one, because I don't think Roger is a very good pilot. Ooh. It doesn't know what Storm is. Uh... Stupid pasture-based games. Can we look at the sky? The sky is alive with electrical activity as large, ominous clouds make their way across the darkened sky. Well, better get out of here before the rain arrives. Ooh, what do we have here? You see several large rocks here. One rock has a large overhang and almost appears to be a cave. Under the overhang, you see several large, pulsating pods. I'm sure those are perfectly harmless, but let's save anyway. Pulsating pods. Nah, no exclamation point necessary there. Let's see what happens if we get close to them. Ooh, carnivorous pulsating pods. It's our first death of the Let's Play. Congratulations on your recent death! Thank you for playing Space Quest 3. As usual, you've been a real hoot. And we're Paul Chow! Okay, well, that didn't go so well. Um, let's see what's to the south of here. Ah! The hell? That's a mighty big snake! Something tells me we should not stay here too long. Let's see what happens. Ouch! <laughs> now we're Snake Joe! Oh well. Let's not go south. Let's just keep going west. Go west... Um, no, let's not do that. You're surrounded by sand and rocks.
And more sand than rocks, I guess. Strange rock formations rise up from the sand dunes. What a desolate place this is, you think to yourself. I might even say magnificent desolation. If I were Buzz Buzz Aldrin. Hey, we're back at the ship. Is this is a Twilight Zone. Oh no! A venomous scorpizoid! Watch out! There it is. Um, those things are usually quite easy to avoid. As long as they don't happen to pop up on the screen really close to you. Well, since um, east and west doesn't seem, really seem to be working out for us, let's head north. The hell's that? You're startled by the sight of a giant beast just beyond the sand dune to the north. Is that really a beast? It looks mechanical. Your fear turns to curiosity as you realize that it is not a real beast, but a mechanical creation. Although it still looks dangerous, you can't decide whether to blast off this rock or inspect further the wonders of Fleabot. Well, there was supposed to be a settlement on this planet, so maybe that's it. Let's check it out. Who in the name of hell would build such a thing? World of Wonders! The hell? Um, I'm gonna assume that meant smile. You all come back now, you hear? Alien scum? I guess that was the proprietor of whatever the hell this is. Aha! A tourist trap! Logical place to put one. This giant metal facsimile of a space beast is nothing more than a cheap marketing ploy designed to suck in any moron dumb enough to fall for such trickery. You suddenly feel like a dumb moron. Well, I'm betting that's not the first time. Um. Uh, well, before we check inside, let's take a look to the sides. Look like there's a door here and a couple of signs. The desert to the north grows darker as storm clouds loom overhead. You find yourself at the base of a gigantic metal model of a great beast. Let's see. Let's look at the sign. There are two signs here. Read this one. See Fleabot from Mog's Head. Entrance free. Sorry, temporarily closed for repair. Oh well, don't need to go there then. Check the other sign. Mog, one of the many large beasts that once roamed this vast desert. But they all eventually died of boredom and are now extinct. So I guess this is a replica of this Mog creature. I think you can go to the north here. Um, but I think the results of doing that um, are deadly. Yes. Lightning strikes! And it will always do that if you try to go further north. And we're burned to a crisp! I miss the puns and the death messages. Why ca do we always have the same one? Oh well, let's just try and go into this world of wonders, but we'll have to do that in the next video. Welcome back! We have found the settlement on Fleabot. And so far there is no sign of that droid that was tracking us, which is a good thing. So let's look into this thing. Apparently this is a replica of a beast called Mock. Let's see if the game knows what that is. No, it doesn't. It also does not know what sh shop means. Look, world o wonders. Aha! Oh. But we already saw that message. Let's see, there seems to be a display case here. You peer through the glass with a display case and find a cute and cuddly little creature. A small sign on the glass informs you that this is an Antarian slime devil. How cute! 
Ooh, I want to see that up close. Sure, it's perfectly safe. Or perhaps not. Yikes! They may be cute, but only an idiot would get near one. Looks like you won't be around to appreciate the other diverse wonders of this garden spot of the universe. Okay, well, we're dead again. No picture this time. Let's leave the uh, slime devil where it is then, and simply go inside. Hi, the stranger! The name's Blatz, Festu Blatz. Welcome to World of Wonders. Go ahead, have a look at some of the trendiest items in the known universe. Make the most of your vacation bakazoid. Well, let's take a look. The cast-off refuge of a dozen worlds clings to every available surface of the store. We're astonished at the diversity. We're even more astonished that someone would buy this stuff. Looks like he has postcards. You examine one of the many interesting postcards. And it's a postcard of Arrakis, known as Dune, with a picture of a sandworm. Arrakis, a great spot for winter travel. Arrakis holds many delights for the adventurous vacationer. Nothing can compare with a blinding dust storm or being crushed by a sandworm. Um, I'll pass. Any others? You examine one of the many interesting postcards. This looks like a bunch of stars with some black in the middle. Black Hole Burfa. Like a giant interstellar vacuum, Black Hole Burfa comes sweeping through the galaxy. All travelers are advised to stay away from Burfa. Just buy the postcard, then tell everyone you went there. I guess we could do that. Ortiga! Hey, that's the planet we saw on the navigation scanner before. Ortiga! The volcanoes of Ortiga are constantly reshaping its surface. Rest in heat-resistant underwear, the hearty traveler can find a lava lover's paradise on this starkly enjoyable planet. This is actually a hint. It tells us that we need heat-resistant underwear to visit Ortiga. Roberta Land! Uh, is that what I think it is? Roberta Land! Come join the, fu the fun at the fun park of the future! See characters from your favorite stories come to life again and again! Recently revised, so don't miss a single thrilling scene! I guess it refers to Roberta Williams? In which case, I guess those characters coming to life would be characters from King's Quest or something. Oh, he's saying something? How about Nas or Ad on a stick? Kids will just love this. We're talking airs of fun for the whole family. Just look at how cute this little guy is. Oh, that sounds nice. Let's buy Orat. Everything here costs 25 buckazoids, and you don't have that much. Oh, well, that sucks. Uh, let's just look at some more postcards. Oh. That's black. Beta Alpha Starless Region. Looking for some real solitude? Come to a place that's so far from everything that you can't even see stars. Mind-numbing boredom greets you as you drift aimlessly through nothing. A must for the brain dead. That would be an ideal spot for Roger then. Wish you were here instead of me. At Choron or something. Acheron! The friendly creatures of Acheron are a delight for young and old alike. Tame enough to come right up and caress you, yet wild enough to slash you to shreds if provoked. That sounds nice. And I think we flopped around. Yes! Oh well, that was fun. Let's see what else he has to say. Now here's Red Hot Odin, the official Astro Chicken flight hat. You'll really turn some heads in this sporty little number. It's mold after the hot new arcade game that's sweeping the galaxy. That sounds interesting. Let's got some other stuff here. Let's look at the shelves. The shelves are arrayed with some fine examples of the natural wonders of this planet. Also some worthless junk that can only be found in a fine tourist establishment such as this. And it looks like he has a lot of gems. 
Many colorful gems are proudly displayed. Why, those green gems at the one end, uh, at the end there, look just like the orium in your pocket. Hmm. That means he might be interested in that. Going to any high temp planets? This nice pair of thermal weave underwear will keep your internal environment pleasant on even the sweatiest world. Worlds. Oh, that sounds like something we would need if we want to visit that Ortega place. But we're gonna need some Buckazoids, so let's see if he wants to buy our gem. Ooh. My, my. That certainly is one fine hunk of Orium. It sure is. I'll take it off your hands for 350 buckzoids. What do you say? Of course, you never take the first offer. No. I'll take it off your hands for 400 buckzoids. What do you say? No. 425 buckzoids. And this is the one you want to take because you won't go any higher. At least this time there's no uh, jetpack that you can miss out on if you don't take the best offer. And he loops back around. Well, we're going to buy all of the stuff he's offering. We're going to buy Orat. Wise choice. I'm sure you'll be very, very pleased. And we're going to buy the Thermo Weave underwear in case you want to visit Ortiga. And we also want to buy the flight hat because it gives points. You can try and wear the hat. You've done the jaunty hat. You feel more sporty already. Yay. Um, let's see what we have. We have the flight hat. Wow, your official Astro Chicken flight hat. Man, the babes will really dig you in this. Yeah, I'm sure. Thermal weave shorts. They keep you cool and you're oh so stylish. All right on a stick. You can open his mouth and close his mouth. Hours of fun for all. Um, okay. Orat, by the way, is the beast from Space Quest 1, which we killed on, um, whatever the planet was called. Uh, I can't remember the name, damn it. Corona, that was the name. The, the beast we called on Corona, we killed on Corona, that was Orat. It seems that they made a toy out of him. How nice. Well, that's uh, all we can get here, so let's leave. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, looks like lightning is getting close. Better be careful out there. I'm sure. And we... <laughs> oh, there goes the flight hat. So, this is Roger Wilco, the man I have been sent across the universe to track down and terminate. I am not impressed. You were too easy to find. You tend to leave a mess wherever you go. Ironic, considering he's a janitor. Seems you forgot to pay for that Labonian Terror Beast mating call whistle. Now let's see you with interest that comes to 400,000 buckazoids. I don't think you've got that kind of cash on you, hmm? No, I didn't think so. The good people at the Jipazoid Novelty, Novelty Company are most displeased. Non-payment is a serious offense. But lucky for you, I'm in a good mood today. I will count to ten real slow, then I track you down. If you make it to your ship, I forget I see you. But if I catch you again, I dust you like bunt cake. Now remember, back in Space Quest 2, I made a point of um, very explicitly pointing out the fact that this mating call whistle was in fact free, according to the order form. So, why they're sending this droid after me, I don't know. I guess it's um, fraud on their part or something. So, we're in trouble now. We'll have to deal with it in the next video. Welcome back. The shit has hit the fan because Arnoid the droid has caught up with us 
for our issue of non-payment on a whistle that, according to the order form in Space Quest 2, was actually free. So what the hell is that about? Anyway, we have 10 seconds to get the hell out of here, and um, you can forget about making it to your ship. Isn't gonna happen. There are actually two ways of dealing with this, and I'm going to show you both of them. The first way is to head to the left from here. You can see he is already following us. What we need to do is go in here and use the elevator quickly. All right. Now let's head up to the second level. Let's take a look around here, actually. You're within the cavernous interior of Malk's belly. An elevator shaft leads down, and stairs run between the first and second level platforms. The heavy equipment necessary to automate Malk can be seen on the upper level. Well, we're safe from Arnold until he comes up here, and you can see the... Um, Elevator moved, there he comes. He seems to have turned off his invisibility. I'm saving here because the timing of this is a little bit tricky and I don't remember exactly what you need to type. I see you, Wilco. Yeah, I would give you uh, an Arnold impression for him, but I suck at doing... Uh, um, is it a pulley? I'm not sure. Reaching up, you give the rope pulley a mighty shove. Got it! Haha! <laughs> And you throw him into the gears, and he gets grinded to scrap. Ha! Serves him right. The Terminator is now a pile of junk on the first level platform. Looking closely, you notice that the Terminator's invisibility belt has survived relatively intact. So we can take that, and that would be real useful and uh, stuff. However, hey, what the hell? <laughs> I didn't know that. Hey, what's going on here? Didn't you read the sign saying we're close to repairs? Oh, I've seen him coming in that grease swelling android. Never did like that Terminator series. Good riddance to bad circuits. Well, you might as well write down with me. I guess we might as well. I've forgotten that he would show up, because I normally don't use this method. Okay, well that's one way. However, there is another way which actually gives you more points, so that's what I'm going to use. Because right now we have 238 points. So let's restore back to um, just after he gave us the warning. Then head south instead. He won't catch you on this screen, so you don't need to worry about that. And there you can see his footprints. I want to go as far right as possible before getting up on the ridge. Like I said, forget about making it to your ship. You're not going to make that. What you want to do is walk behind the back of these things. Hey! Come on, that's supposed to work. Okay, let's try that again. That's supposed to work. He's supposed to get eaten by those things. No. Apparently going to the right did not particularly help much. On that screen. Got it. There we go. He gets eaten, but uh, pods don't like him and they spit him back out. The question now is, 
How do we get this invisibility belt without getting eaten ourselves? Let's look at uh, the damage we've done. The Terminator is now a pile of junk lying on the sand under the pustules. Looking closely, you notice that the Terminator's invisibility belt has survived relatively intact. Now what you need to do to get the belt is use Oret. But apparently not from here. I think you need to do it from this side, but I'm not sure. Yes, there we go. Use the Orat on a stick to grab the belt. And now we have 248 points. Ten more than with the other method. Isn't that nice? Well, we've gotten the Terminator off our back. And we've gotten some stuff so we can go to Ortega with the thermal we have unaware if we want to. And we've gotten money in case we need it somewhere else. But there's nothing else to do on this uh, planet, so let's sit down and get out of here. Start the engines. And blast off! Let's check the navigation system. What else is on here? That's where we are now. Ooh. Name, Monolith Burger Fast Food Dive. Sector 62. A finite number served. It's a McDonald's ripoff. Well, I do feel a little bit peckish, so I guess we should check it out. So, set course. And... Light speed. Let's hope nobody follows us this time. A flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. Throttling engines back, approaching Monolith Burger. Hey look, it's the Enterprise! And seems like they're just leaving. Too bad, would've been nice to meet Captain Kirk. This song will never get out of your head. With the docking maneuver completed, the engine shut down. Welcome to Monolith Burger. You pop the hatch and ramble on in. Okay, interesting looking place. The decor, like the food, is the same in Monolith Burgers all over the universe. Generic counter clerks are eagerly awaiting to help you. Diverse life forms are crowded around the counter and sitting in booths consuming what can only loosely be termed food. Um, let's look at some of the people here. Your eyes take in the diversity of alien forms without much interest. After all, you're quite a spacefaring kind of guy. Well, I guess he's used to that kind of thing. Why don't you buy a bag of food first? Okay, okay. I thought maybe we could look at what other people were eating. eating. Man, this table is a mess. Yes, the cold plastimal tables are like millions of others you've seen. That's never gonna work. Um, well, looks like there's quite a line here. Let's see what's on the left. That's the same description as before. And I'm gonna save here. So I wanna show you what happens if you try and go into the other airlock, go into the other ship. Out of my airlock, geek! Well, he's gone now, so now I guess we can safely go back in there. Or not. That's it for you, Bozo! Hey, my name isn't Bozo. 
Don't trust guys in black spacesuits. Pulse laser blast to the forehead is not your idea of fun. Fortunately, it didn't hit anything important. Yeah. Nevertheless, we're still dead. So I guess we should order some food. After all, what else would you do in, uh, in a fast food restaurant? But we'll do it in the next video. Welcome back! Defeating Terminators is hungry work. Just ask Sarah Connor, Connor, I'm sure she'll agree. So, we've come to Monolith Burger, a clear McDonald's ripoff. I wonder if Sierra got sued over this. The whole Space Quest series has gotten Sierra more lawsuits than any other games they've made. Anyway, let's uh, order some food. There's a weird looking clerk there. Welcome to Monolith Burger. May I take your order? That you may. He's the employee of the week, I guess. The clerk looks like he'd rather be doing anything besides waiting on you. Let's look at the menu. Let's see, we can order a mini monolith, or a regular monolith, or a monolith with poly cheese. Poly cheese? I don't even want to know. Filet o orat, jumbo monolith with poly cheese. Big Belcher Combo, which includes a Jumbo Mono with Poly Cheese, Space Spots with Extra Grease and the Sloppy Slurper, a Monolith Fun Meal, Space Spots, and we can buy a drink, either a Tang, small, medium or large, or a Sloppy Slurper. I think if you buy the Big Belcher Combo, you'll get sick once you try to uh, go back into your ship, although it doesn't kill you. If my memory is correct, but I'm not going to buy it though. What we want to buy is the Monolith Fun Meal. After all, we want to have fun, don't we? Um, seven Buckazoids is actually the amount of money we found under the seat in the ship. So I guess if you come here first, before going to Fleabot, if you found that money, you could still actually do this, even though you haven't sold the gem yet. Okay, well, uh, I don't really want anything else. Fun meal is enough, so let's uh, just get out of here. Would you like something to drink with that? Yes or yes. I want a yes on the right. Would you like some space butts with that? Um, thanks for giving me a choice there. <laughs> also labeled as pushy counter, counter clerk. Would you like a blood fruit pie with that? As long as you're not charging me any extra. Special today! Free drink with every purchase! Your total is seven buckazoids. Well, he didn't charge me any extra for all the stuff, so I guess that's okay. Let's pay him. Is he getting our food? Have a nice day! Sure, whatever. You gingerly pick up the greasy bag. You can hardly wait to have a seat and dig in. Oh, this is the only free table that isn't horrendously dirty. So let's eat! Om nom 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 nom. Tasty, I guess. Ow! Hey, what's this in my burger? Oh, it, it must be my fun meal prize! Hey, it's a swell decoder ring! Gee, I wonder if that will come in useful. Hmm, that was mighty tasty. Well, maybe mildly tasty. Well, maybe not tasty at all. In fact, it reminded you of the slick skin of a Vorlian mucus worm. Okay, way to kill my appetite, game. Alrighty. Well, at least we ate. Even if it didn't taste any good. Let's see what else we can do here. It looks like there's an arcade machine here. Uh, I'm gonna save, actually. Uh, not that you can die here, but still.
Let's see, it's Astro Chicken! The thing we got the flight hat from. Astro Chicken must land on the Astro Chicken landing pad. He's depending on you to do something. And we get the um, controls, which is pretty standard stuff. And I guess we could play this game. This game sucks. It all it really is terrible. I know you know I'm prone to complain about fighting or stuff like that. But that's not even the problem here. The problem isn't so much that it's an arcade sequence in an adventure game, even though I do think that is, generally speaking, a bad idea. The problem is that the game sucks. It should be illegal. Well, let's see what we can do. Unfortunately, you need to play it. Stop! Ah! I'm... I'm also terrible at it. The controls are horrible! And I'm out of feed, which means I can't fly anymore. Oh! <laughs> Made that by accident! Bacock! <laughs> I'm actually not doing too badly at the moment. Um, and now I'm just dying... in droves. Pecan! Made it again. And died again. Game over! Oh well. Let's try it again. As long as you get points every time you land this uh, guy correctly. Five points. Um, the maximum number of points you can get is 318, if I'm not mistaken. A total of 50 points. Oh. Ah! Stupid thing. There. I'm not sure if you actually need to get... Oh, and I ran out of feed. If you actually need to get the maximum number of points before you can continue here... I want to reach the maximum number of points before we continue here, though, because if... I don't, I can't get the maximum number of points at the end of the game! Ah! Got it. Well, if I'm right about the maximum number of points we have... Only... Uh, two landings left now. <laughs> that went well. Actually, you're doing surprisingly good here. Well, that was hopeless. Well, we got 318 points. But nothing happened yet. So I guess we need to play it again. You need to play until something happens. And I'm not sure how long that's going to take, but... I'm very sure 318 was the maximum. Yep, we're not getting any points anymore. I just need to... So, my theory of being able to continue after you get the maximum number of points... ...has been disproven. And I'm actually pretty sure that... Um, ...you can actually get what you're supposed to get here before you reach that number of points. And if you do, you won't be able to get any more points, even if you play the game again. So I'm glad I got the maximum, which means I will be able to get to the maximum score once we reach the end of the game. Okay, that didn't go so well. Ah! Ooh, that was easy. Eh, help! This game is terrible. Yet somehow strangely fun. 
There were actually actual games like this, like Lander games, but with better controls, so they weren't as terrible as this one. <sighs> Still no. Man! The thing is that you don't even have any hints that something is supposed to happen here. So you could easily just continue not realize that you're supposed to get something here. You can actually finish the game without doing this, but Roger won't really know what's going on if you do. Which I guess is his default state, because he's not that smart. So, if you continue without getting this bit, uh, you'll uh, see Roger talking... Uh, when you look at some things later on in the game, you'll say like, I have no idea what this is! And if you do get it, he'll know what it is and he'll know what you're supposed to be doing! Man, how much longer is this gonna take? I guess if it takes too long, I could always edit some of it out. Keep the interest in this video a little bit. Getting better at it. He said and then promptly died. The hell? Ah! Come on, I deserve to get that damn thing. How much more of this game do they want me to play? Doesn't usually take this long, I think. And it's not a number of landings or, or anything you need to get before you uh, get the message. Because it is a message we're waiting for. I run out of money. This uh, this keeps up. Ah! Ah! Come on! I just totally forgotten that. Still nothing! Yeah, I guess I could always do the police quest thing and just speed things up. Oh, come on. Oh, I ran out of feet. And I'm just... Made it! Yay! I was totally not expecting that. And I'm dead again! Oh, finally! Something happened! It looks like an encoded message! And we have a decoder ring! And it gives you the key to figuring out this code! Or this message! We'll have to do that in the next video! Or you could do it yourself in between videos! Whatever you... Um, you want, because you now have all the information you need. Anyway, we'll continue next time. Welcome back. Unfortunately, I accidentally got rid of the message uh, when I tried to save in between videos, but we've seen it. There was an encoded message, and using the decoder ring we got from the fun meal, we were able to get the key. It's a simple substitution cipher, and you're supposed to just figure it out by yourself. And what it says after you uh, decode it is Help us! We are being held captive by Scumsoft on the small moon of Pestilon. An impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We're counting on you, whoever you are. Two guys in trouble. Well, seems like we have a mission. We have to rescue these two guys, who are apparently being held captive by something called Scumsoft. 
which is a software company from the sound of it. I think it's actually supposed to be a uh, reference to Microsoft. In any case, their CEO does look like Bill Gates. We'll see him later. Um, or sort of, anyway. Um, but they're being held on the moon of Pestilon, and we have no idea where that is. But we do have an explanation of the title. Pirates of Pestilon is apparently re referring to... Scumsoft, I guess. Let's see if we can find them. After all, we are a hero. Sort of. So I guess we should uh, rescue them. You slide back into the ship, closing the hatch behind you. The docking control beam begins, guiding you safely clear of Monolith Burger. All right. Well, let's see where else we can go. Turn the engines on. Because don't need to take off because we never landed. Let's look to, at the navigation system. Oh, and it's Ortega again. It seems like that's the only place that we have left that we can go. So, I guess that means that Pestilon, wherever the hell that is, can be found from there. After all, there's no other locations left in the game to explore. So let's go there. Let's punch it. Nobody following us this time? Good. Well, like I said in the previous video, you can actually finish the entire game without ever seeing the message from the two guys. If you haven't seen it, Roger will just constantly be wondering what the hell's going on, what the hell stuff is, and he won't know what he's doing. Now that we have seen the message, he will know what's going on. We'll see, okay, that's the shield generator and stuff like that. Okay, let's land on Ortega, which is a lava lover's paradise, according to the postcard we read. With a mighty wump, you set down the aluminum mallet on the surface of Ortega. I keep reading that wrong, but anyway. Let's look at the window. Outside the stark surface of Ortega stretches into the distance. A lava lover's paradise, to be sure. Very good. Let's stand and save as La Lava Lover's Paradise. Because, yeah, the postcard said we needed thermo weave underwear, but I'm sure they were just exaggerating. My, my, this is one hot planet. Hopefully you'll last more than a few minutes. I'm sure we will. Pum -pum -pum -pum. Oh, actually, uh, realize uh, we actually last surprisingly long. Too late, you realize that walking around unprotected on this planet is hazardous to your health. You feel your blood begin to boil, and he melts. You sizzle into oblivion. This planet wouldn't be so bad if you could keel keep cool somehow. It's so hot, you could fry a Vorlian phlegm snake egg. Sunbathing not recommended. It's a standard way to make something uh, sound science fiction-y. Just take an ordinary word and put some random adjectives in front of it to make it sound alien-y. Like the Vorlian phlegm snake egg or Romulan ale. Okay, well, let's wear our thermo weave underwear. After figuring out which side is the front, you put on the thermo weave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. That sounds useful. I want one.
My, my, this is one hot planet. But you don't care. You're beating the heat with thermoweave underwear. Was that a commercial? It sounded like it. The planet Ortiga is truly a lava lover's paradise. Volcanic activity constantly reshapes its surface. So if you have any maps older than last week, throw them out. I don't have any maps. I actually know the layout of this place pretty much by heart, so anyway. And it's the same message. Hmm. Interesting looking structure there. Can we look at the volcano? In the distance, volcanoes spew magma from deep within the molten interior. That's what volcanoes do. Oh, it does not know the word plateau. Um, uh, chasm? The molten lava casts a mysterious glow on the sides of the deep fissures. Watch your step. Okay, well, I. Ah! It appears that parts of this planet's surface are not entirely stable. Better be careful, or you'll end up in that lava fondue below. Lava fondue? Is that like cheese fondue? Because I like cheese fondue. Oh, better hide. Who are these goons? Obviously loyal company men, the scum-soft employees are happily performing their duties. But looking at their weapons, you probably don't want to get too close. Yes. Scum-soft employees, eh? Well, I think if you didn't read the message, Roger wouldn't know that they are scum-soft employees. But now he does. Oh, we'd better... Um, what are they doing anyway? Let's see what they have here. There's a telescope, an anemometer, a fair, an anemometer, on a pole, some seismic equipment, and a crate of some sort. And they're leaving, which is good, I guess. You hear the roar of the pirate's scout ship taking off. The ship streaks across the sky to an unknown destination. Well, if. Uh Oh, there they go. If there are employees of Scumsoft here, I guess that means that Pestulon must be nearby. Well, let's look through this telescope, which the other guy was looking through. Aha! Wait, what is that? Aha! You've discovered the force beam generator. And that moon must be Pestulon. Again, if you didn't read the encoded message, Roger would not know any of that. He'd be uh, sitting here going, what the hell is that? The narrator would not be any help. Oh. And I can't type anything while well there. Can we take the telescope? Nah, it wouldn't do you any good. Okay, I guess that must be true, otherwise we could have taken it with us. Hmm. Let's see here. That is apparently an anemometer. It looks like a couple of tennis balls cut in half and spins when the wind blows. Can we take that with us? It's attached firmly to the pole. It won't budge. I'll take the pole with us then. It's all yours. Yay, we have a pole. A handy metal pole. Oh, and we also have the invisibility belt. I didn't look at that yet. Terminator's invisibility belt. Ah, oh, come on. Not even any fun message there. Let's see what this is. It's full of thermal detonators. Ooh. That sounds like it could be fun. You pick up one of the detonators. Be careful. You could blow your fingers off with that thing. Yes. Giving Roger explosives sounds like a bad idea. Used for blowing stuff to little bits. It has an impact switch. So in other words, don't drop it. Alright. Well, we'll see if we can get to that force beam generator thingy in the next video.
Welcome back. We have found the force field generator that generates the force field around Pestilon. So we're gonna have to take it out if we want to be able to save those two guys that send us the message through the Astro Chicken game. And it appeared to be in this direction, so let's see if we can uh, go this way. It seems that we kind of cannot go any further right from here. The climb becomes steeper as you near the rim of the old volcano. Well, there we go, up the slopes of Mount Doom, I guess. You reach the rim of the decayed cinder cone and are overwhelmed by the sight. An impressive machine of staggering size sits in the middle of the volcanic crater. Hmm. Something tells me just throwing the detonator at it isn't gonna really do much. It's pointing to a small moon high in the Ortigian sky. Pulsating circular energy fields are being emitted into space towards the moon. Um, well, let's see if we can get in there. Yeah. They just keep repeating that one message. Hmm. This thing is huge. You stand at a massive base of the force gener beam generator. This unit can generate a force field powerful enough to encircle a small moon. Or a space station. Like the Death Star. Looks like there's a ladder behind here. You're at the base of the massive generator. A ladder leads up to the top. Well, that sounds like it could be interesting. Let's climb some ladders. I'm guessing we're not taking this one with us. Looks rather a bit big. Dangerous place. So let's save here. Because after all, if we're not careful, we could fall. It wouldn't be so bad except for the sudden stop at the end. Next time, don't get so close to the edge. It's deceleration trauma. Why did they start giving custom death messages uh, halfway through the game, by the way? Because in the beginning, we just get, got a uh, standard message all the time. Well, I prefer this, so I'm not complaining. Okay, let's not fall this time. Let's stop at the edge. While trying to catch your breath, you take in the panoramic view. Below, you can see your ship off in the distance, and volcanoes stretching out over the horizon. There's a large circular opening here at the top of the generator. This must be where the beam originates. Watch your step up here. Yes, we already found that out. No. Cautiously, you peer down into the generator. It's too dark to make out anything, but the drone of the generator tells you that something is definitely happening. Well, let's see if we can... Uh, stop something from happening. There it goes. The explosion disables the force field generator. You may now travel safely to Pestilon. Yay! That's what we were hoping to accomplish. And cautiously, you peer down into the generator. It's too dark to make out anything, but the drone of the generator has stopped. It appears to be out of commission. Let's climb down again. Well, that's one problem dealt with quickly and efficiently. All we gotta do is get off this planet and go to Pestilon. Oh! Uh-oh! That detonator has apparently set up a chain reaction of earthquakes. You'd better get off this rock ASAP. I like how the narrator draws that conclusion from a single earthquake. 
And it has to be a chain reaction. Okay. I don't think you are, you're actually in any danger of, like, dying from the earthquakes or anything. Unless you take ridiculously long to get off the planet. Never done me any harm anyway. Then again, I've never hung out around long enough to see what happens. I think you can look through the telescope again. Oh. Wanna use it! Not just look at it. You can see that the generator is broken. Yep, the broken generator's still there. How many times are you gonna look at it? Well, I only did it once. Oh. Uh. Let's just get off this rock before anything else goes wrong. Oops. My, my. Things have certainly changed since you were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the shiv simmering lava below. That might be a problem. Let's see what we have in our inventory that might help. Or out on a stick. No. The only thing that could help is the pole. Let's just vault over this hole. Let's uh, get Roger to prove his athletic credentials. Your brow furrows in grim determination as you prepare for a tremendous leap. The Romanian judge gives you a 9.5, a truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season. You'd like to try that again, but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below. Oh, well, that means we won't be trying that again. Oh, we don't need to. We just need to get out of here. And it seems we're home safe. So, sit down. And let's get off this rock before something else goes wrong. And let's see if now we can make it to... Pestulon. Which, since it's a moon of Ortiga, you would expect to be near Ortiga. And it is. And it has habitants unknown, surface uncharted, its figures. What? This computer is getting self-referential. Um, let's see. Set course. And even though it's pretty close, we're still going to use light speed. Well, it should arrive pretty much immediately. See, there we are. A flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. Orbiting Pestulon. Oh, it's sure quicker than just using rockets. I mean, it took uh, Neil Armstrong and the other Apollo astronauts three days to fly to our moon. We just did it in two seconds. Well, let's uh, land. He orbited it once, first, for some reason. With a mighty wump, you set uh, the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Pestulon. Look out the window. Outside, the strange surface of Pestulon stretches into the distance. Forces beyond your comprehension seem to have shaped this bizarre world. Interesting. Well, let's hope we can uh, find these Scumsoft guys and rescue those two guys who sent the message. Wow, this is a strange looking planet. What a peaceful planet for a software company, you think to yourself. What a shame it had to be Scumsoft. 
You are surrounded by what can only be described as tree-like growths towering high above you. The turf has a mossy texture. It sure is an interesting looking place, and we'll look around it in the next video. Welcome back. We have finally, uh, finally arrived on Pestilon. The home of the evil software company known as Scumsoft. It's interesting how our ship appears to be a different color on every planet that we land on. Different lighting conditions or palette limitations. Either is possible, I guess. Okay, well, where do we go from here? Actually, it does not matter. Regardless of which direction you go in, you end up in the same place. You make your way through the forest of strange trees to this clearing where you discover the entrance to some large underground complex. This must be Scumsoft. Suddenly, the door to the complex begins to open. Ooh, we found it. There's guards coming out. Several guards file out of the entrance and disperse into the woods. They must have been alerted to your presence when you landed. Two guards remain behind to watch the entrance. Okay, now this puts us in a conundrum because those guards are looking for us. But, uh... Oh, <laughs> the game doesn't like me hanging around here that long. Well, those guards are looking for us, so if we hang around out here, if we or if we return to the ship, then uh, things will probably go wrong. Because they'll find us. So let's just try to enter Scumsoft. Maybe the guards um, at the door won't notice us. I'm sure we'll be fine. Oops. What the hell kind of gun is that? Congratulations on your recent death. Oh, we don't get a custom death message for this. It seems like we've been encased in jello. That's the jello guns that the, the message of the two guys spoke about. Okay, well, that didn't go so well. Yes, we've seen this. So how can we evade those guards? If only there were some way we could avoid being seen. If only we had some way to, you know, become invisible. Like an invisibility belt. If only. Wait, we do have one. Okay, you wear the belt. Well, I guess it has a button on the front. Because we saw Arnoid push it. Wow! This thing really works! You then quickly realize that you only have a few moments before the belt's power pack is depleted. It's always the case with these things. So... I need to wait for that message again. There we go. And... Enter Scumsaw, this time unseen. You now stand invisible before the entrance to Scumsoft. Two mean-looking guards stand watch. They've no doubt been instructed to shoot anything that moves, so don't waste any more time gawking. Okay, okay. We'll head inside. And oh, just in time. What's happening? It looks like you've made it just in time, as your invisibility belt is now completely out of power. How inconvenient. Also, not a coincidence, it always runs out when you get here. I think it also runs out if you waste too much time outside. But regardless of how quickly you get in here, it will always run out when you get to this point. Well, no worries. Looks like we uh, made it, the guards aren't looking inside. You're within the outer fortifications of the Scumsoft headquarters. You see an elevator door and a button on the wall. Hmm. Interesting place, actually. I mean, it looks more like a military fortress. I've worked at software companies, and they're not usually this fortified. Oh well. 
They also usually don't have armed guards, at least not in my experience. <coughs> Sorry. Let's uh, head inside. Hopefully that doesn't trigger any alarms. Oh, great. This particular section. This um, is one of the most awkwardly controlled sections in any game, any Sierra game. I'm gonna save here because I don't remember which door is which. Because in order to go through those doors, you have to line up pretty precisely. Well, I made that one. But... Security! We have an intruder in accounting! Oops. And another jello gun. Just like Mom used to make, as your life sputters too close, you decide to cut down on desserts. And now we get a custom jello message. Good. Oh well. Looks like uh, we'll need a disguise to get in there. Too bad that the invisibility belt ran out. Wow, Roger's quite broad-shouldered. Um, hey, another door. This is what I meant by having to be lined up properly. Why is Roger just walking in the walls? Hmm. Nothing happened. You find yourself in... Guess. A janitor's closet. You certainly have a sixth sense about this kind of thing. Sure. Anything in here? Um. What the hell do I have to type to find out what's in here? That, I guess. Rummaging about the cramped closet, you find a pair of old, grimy janitorial coveralls. Hmm. Disguising oneself as a janitor? It's so clever, they'd never expect it. Except we are a janitor. Um, let's wear those coveralls, then. What a great idea, Roger! No one would be suspicious of a janitor walking around. You grab the coveralls and pull them on, seizing the opportune moment to dump all of the old items you've been pocketing along the way. What a great disguise! Wait, what's this? You reach down into the pocket of the grimy coveralls and find... Well, what do you know? Mr. Garbage! A trash vaporizer! You've seen these babies in all the janitorial supply catalogs, but your superiors were always too cheap to outfit you with one. You know, back when I first played this game, and I was just learning English, I could never figure out what the hell a vaporizer was. I mean, obviously it got rid of trash, but I had no idea what the word meant. Now I do know. It vaporizes trash, as you might expect. Wow! We're disguised, and you can see we actually have this thing in our hand. Have we looked in this hallway again uh, yet? No. You're in a hallway, somewhere deep in the innards of Scumsoft Inc. Okay, let's see. Any other doors here we need to know about? Ooh, there's one. But it doesn't open, so Roger just walks into it. The door is a keycard security system, as well as a composite facial scanner. It will be pretty tricky gaining access. Hmm, a facial scanner, that's not a good thing. I mean, a keycard... I can see how we might find one somewhere, but... How are we gonna fool the facial scanner? Well... I'm sure something will present itself. I'm assuming we have to go in there, I mean... It's it's an adventure game, and it's a locked door. Obviously, we need to go in there. We need to find those two guys who send us the message somewhere. Maybe they're behind that door. And I'm having trouble lining up with this one. There we go. 
and this guy now finds that everything is in order. You're in the cost-efficient corporate accounting department of Scomsoft Inc. These hard-working accountants are trying to figure out where the company spends its money. Okay, um, now this is basically a maze and it's not that difficult. The only thing you need to be aware of is that if you just walk around, they'll get suspicious of you and zap you again. What you need to do is act like the janitor you are, which is which basically means you need to uh, vaporize trash as you pass it. But I guess we're gonna have to tackle this maze in the next video. Welcome back! We have infiltrated the inner sanctum of Scumsoft in order to try and rescue the two guys who send us the message through the Astro Chicken video game. Because that's just the kind of nice guy Roger is. We've disguised ourselves as a janitor, but in order to not attract any attention, we must make sure that we clean every waste basket we pass, otherwise they'll get suspicious. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So, every time we walk by a waste basket, we need to use the vaporizer to clean up the trash. Let's look at the accountant. Everyone here looks related. It's like a secret society of nerds. Okay. Looks like he has a calendar. The calendar indicates today. How useful. Alright. Well, let's just uh, see what we can find here. You do need to line up pretty precisely with uh, the baskets, and if you miss too many times, they'll also get suspicious and catch you. Looks like this is a dead end, but what do we have here? There is a photograph on the wall, rather conspicuously. It is a photograph of the boss, Elmo Pug who I believe is supposed to sort of resemble Bill Gates, even though he doesn't really. But I think he's supposed to, I'm not sure though. Um, anyway, this might help us get past that facial scanner. So let's take the photo. Surreptitiously, you snatched the picture of Elmo. Unfortunately, if we try to walk out of here carrying the picture, they'll uh, catch us again. But it looks like there's something here that could help. A copier. It's your typical office copier. Untypically, it works. Indeed, very rare. So let's copy the photo. First, making sure that no one is watching, you slip Elmo's picture into the copier and press the start button. Out pops a beautifully reproduced copy, which you roll up and stash in your pocket. Don't forget your original. Good thing you remembered us of that, because, I mean, Roger is not that bright, so he probably would have forgotten. Let's see, anything in this uh, cabinet? The cabinet is locked. Regardless, you wouldn't find anything useful. Which is the game's way of telling me, don't bother with it. Well, let's replace the original photograph. Wisely, you replaced the original picture of Elmo. That doesn't give us any extra points. Well, since this is a dead end, I guess we need to find another way through this maze. Now, where I want to go, actually, is um, up here. So it looks like we need to go left up there, and then back to the right at the top. Of course, let's not forget to... Uh, Vaporize the trash. As we go along.
I'm just gonna save here, just in case. So it does happen occasionally that if you walk a little bit weird, then they'll uh, catch you. And in case it does, I don't want to have to start over from the beginning. I think we can do it from inside. Yes. Good thing the real janitor is not around, because that would have made things very awkward. Let's see where this takes us. Oh, now that's interesting. You're in the boss's cubicle area, and the boss is in. Be reverent. What the hell? There's programmers being whipped? No. Uh, can I look at them? No. Over the top of the partitions you can see two gentlemen cracking whips. You assume, you assume that it must be the programming department. Why does he assume that? Oh. I wanted to look at Elmo. Fine, then we won't look at Elmo. Let's be nice and clean up his trash. Can we look at him now? Behind the desk sits a boy who looks to be out f about 14 years old. Do your job and get out, he blurbs. Okay. Better not hang around, I guess. Um, let's see what's up here. I mean, I'd like to snoop around Elmo's office a bit more, but... Uh, that's not possible as long as he's in there, so let's check up here. Hey, it's our ship! Your ship doesn't appear to have been tampered with. You realize that it's only a matter of time before you are found as well. Better get on to the business at hand, finding those two guys. I wonder if there's other ships. I think those are fighters. The short-range fighters are well armed and ready for action. Even if you do manage to escape, they'll no doubt send these babies after you. Hmm, well, that's something to keep in mind, then. Just look in general here. You stand on a platform overlooking the scum-soft vehicle bay. In the center of the hangar sits your ship, surrounded by rows of short-range skull fighters. Now how will you ever get out of here? That's a good question. I'm sure we'll find a way. Hey, Helmo left. That's a good thing. You're in the boss's cubicle area, and the boss is out. Be yourself. Okay, let's take a look in here, then. Looks like there's something on the desk. All of the desk drawers are locked. However, someone has carelessly left a keycard on the desk. Now that's a good thing. You take the keycard. Great. How about the graph? Um, chart? I guess not. Oh well. We've got a keycard and we've got a picture which should be able to get us through that door. Nothing else we need here. And since we already took care of all of that garbage along the way, we can just walk back. It doesn't matter that we didn't do the garbage for that area to the left. It only matters that you take care of all the garbage that you actually pass. Okay, well there's the uh, door. And I'm just gonna save here. I guess we run out of save slots. That's annoying. Well, let's use the key card. You 
You hear several clicks. I'm in, you think to yourself. Oh, good thing that was a key card that actually works here. Then you hear a synthesized voice say, Key card verified. Stand by for composite facial scan. Now we quickly need to um, hold up the copy of the photo we got to fool that scan. Real biometric scanners are usually not this easily fooled. But anyway, this one apparently is, and we got in! Great! Ooh, interesting. Wait a second. I recognize those two guys. Those are the two guys from Andromeda. The guys who made the Space Quest series. Who would have guessed it was them all along? You cautiously enter a darkened chamber. A seemingly bottomless shaft drops off into a black abyss. It's a rule. Every kind of space station evil fortress thingy in science fiction needs to have bottomless drops. I think that was instituted by the uh, Star Wars Act of 1977. On a platform in the center of the chamber, the two guys from Andromeda wiggle helplessly in line jello. The platform can only be reached by the four retractable bridges at each entrance. Well, I assume there are some controls for the bridge here somewhere. The only visible means of access to the detention platform is by means of retractable bridges. Yes, I know that. Are there controls or something? An array of control buttons adjoins each door. Oh yeah, you can see them on the doors on the left and uh, right. And I guess we'll uh, have to push that button and see if we can save these two guys in the next video. Welcome back! We have found the two guys from Andromeda, the creators of the Space Quest series, who apparently were the ones who sent us that note. I, I thought they worked for Sierra. How, how the hell are they working for Scumsoft? But first we need to get to them, and in order to do that we need to cross this bridge. Roger automatically walks to the control panel, which helps. Well, I'm sure we're perfectly safe here. This doesn't look like a trap at all. Elf! They slurp from their jello-encased captivity. Well, I guess there's only one way to save them. Eat the jello. Yuck! You hate lime jello. Oh, well, I guess we have to find another way then. Wait, I know. Let's use the vaporizer. You successfully free the two guys from their slimy confines, and they begin to speak. Hey look, we now have... Uh, 737 out of 738 points. Just one point left. I mean that... Uh, I guess that means we finished the game and I uh, missed a point somewhere or something. Thanks, dude! It's great to be out of that green stuff. Hey, what's your name? I have no idea which of them is talking, but anyway. Roger Wilco you admit. As if it's something to be ashamed of. They discovered our distress message we coded into the Astro Chicken game and sent us here as punishment. Let's get out of here before we're discovered. Uh, uh oh. This does not bode well. Also, I'm standing in the middle because you can actually fall off the edge. Not a problem for them. So, uh, what's your plan for getting us out of here, Wilco? Um, my plan is to stand here and surrender. Uh-oh, it's Elmo! Nobody's going anywhere! <laughs> you must have thought you were pretty clever, Mr. Wilco, disguising yourself as a janitor. Uh, I thought I was clever. And also, I am a janitor. Not much of a disguise. Unfortunately for you, my boys find your sorry excuse for a ship in the woods. Escort this gentleman to the arena. You boys haven't seen a good fight in quite a while. And do away with those two and drum of them. 
They've been more trouble than they're worth. Take them away. This does not both well. Also, we just lost 199 points. We're back to 538. You and the two guys are separated and escorted away. A door opens and you are led into the dark unknown. Um, this looks interesting. Okay, we'll go. The name of the game is Nukem Nukem Robots. The only rule is that there are no rules. It's a play on Rock'em Sock'em Robots, in case you didn't get it. You have a limited power supply. A successful blow will absorb my robot's energy and vice versa. On the other hand, a wasted movement of any kind will rapidly deplete your robot's power. Sounds like fun, huh? Eh, well it's not as bad as Astro Chicken. Anyway, here's the deal. If you win, <laughs> you have the honor of becoming Scumthoff's new full-time dancer. <laughs> but if I win, you will die or something. I don't. I didn't really read that last part. Oh, by the way, your friends, the two guys from Andromeda, have joined us, as you can see below. Be careful not to step on them. <laughs> okay, now my keyboard is wet, because I'm spitting quite a lot during this void. Voice. Let the game begin. Um, let's. You can actually uh, start before he finishes talking. Well, it's pretty simple. J to punch, M to block. Use the arrow keys to control your robot. Kick his robotic butt, we'll go! Easiest thing to do is to wait for him to come to you and then try and hit him. He has much better controls, so... It's a bit unfair. Still, like I said, not as hard. In either case, though, I'm still gonna save here. Just in case. Isn't this exciting? No, it's not. Ah, damn it. I'm still slightly ahead. I guess this would be a good time to try and save again, since I'm winning. At least it allows you to save during this, which is good. Got him! That's the end of Elmo Pug. Come on, Roger! One of them said. Catch them, you fools! Ha! You're too late! We made it! We're out of there! And now we have 638 points. Well, Roger, you're done good. You managed to rescue the two guys and escape from Pestilon alive. Looks like it'll, this'll be a milk run from here on out. Um, Mr. Narrator, aren't you forgetting something? Gosh, Roger, we really appreciate you saving us and all. This is timed, I can't skip it. Yeah, we were really scared. We didn't know what Pug was going to do to us. Again, I apologize if this impression sounds nothing like the real uh, Scott and Mark. Hey, uh, don't you think we better get out of here? Pug's really sore, and he probably sent some ships after us. Good idea. Warning, short-range fighters approaching from rear. Weapons lock on detected. Oops. Let's lock at the monitor. Um. Ooh. 
Attack speed. And damn it, those bastards disabled the light speed. Those jokers back on Pestilon must have tampered with the light speed thingamajig. So we use attack speed and we try to f fight them off. The target is in rear. Oh. Well, that wasn't a good thing. Having the correct shields up could have prevented this. The final shot sheds the stride of your ship. Shreds the side of your ship. In a sudden vacuum, your body fluids expand beyond the capacity of your tissues. Your desiccated body will drift forever. A grim testament to your blundering stupidity. Ah, oh, come on, man. I didn't have time to switch it. And unfortunately, I didn't save, which means I have to do the last bit of this again. So yeah, wasting a little bit of time here. I'm sorry for that. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's and let's save this time so this doesn't happen again. Get them, you fools. Well, now we know we are not, in fact, scot-free. Even though we do have a scot with us. Yeah, terrible pun, I know. Well, Roger, you're done good, blah, blah, blah. Let's, um... Save as escaped. Almost. And let's look at the monitor this time. Actually, uh, we'll do that in the next video. See you next time! Welcome back! We've escaped from... Scumsoft, but as we found out last time, we're not quite out of the woods yet. Because they've disabled the light speed. Those jokers back on Pestilon must have tampered with the light speed thingamajig. And they're sending uh, ships after us, so we'd better get to attack speed and use the weapon systems. Now, this isn't actually hard, I was just unlucky last time. What you need to do is watch the target display in the bottom left and simply uh, make sure that you keep the sh uh, shields where it says the target is. Warning, short-range fighters approaching from rear. Weapons lock on detected. It says from rear now, so um, I already have the shields on the rear. I'll show the help here. When the enemy ship comes from behind, you will automatically begin tracking. Use the direction keys or mouse to move the car target crosshairs onto the target. When you are locked on, use the spacebar to fire. Well, that seems pretty simple. Well, let's wait until those fires ca uh, fighters caps up. Catch up. Okay, so they move to the front, and we shoot them. No target right now, but the next one will be from the rear, so I'm gonna switch my tar uh, my shields again. We need to do about three of these, I think. And they're not that hard. Okay, shields back to the rear. Wait for another target to show up. Switch the shield again. Oh, and he wandered right in my line of fire. Ooh. <laughs> that was a little bit too uh, quick on the switching there. Fortunately, I managed to switch back. I realized my error before it was too late. Gotcha again! Haha! <laughs> More? I guess so. I thought it was only three, but apparently there's more of them. Haha. The remaining enemy ships have given up and are heading back to the planet. It looks like you were just too much for them. 
But we still have the slight problem that our light speed is not working. Okay, let's switch this off. Hmm. And press F6 for cockpit view. We have maximum points now. Man, oh man, you really showed those bozos a thing or two. Now can we get something to eat? Oh, we could go back to Monolith Burger, if our light speed was working. You inform the two guys that light speed is no longer functional. They're not overly pleased by this piece of news. Yes, because space, you know, is big. Really, really big. You just wouldn't believe how big it is. If you think of something really big, well, space is even bigger than that. So without light speed, we're not cutting anywhere. This was a paraphrase from the Hitchhiker's Guide, in case you didn't notice. What? Now I'll never get any food. Some rescuer you are. Well, thanks for tr <laughs> Thanks, we tried at least. Hey, uh, what's this thing on the wall? It says, light speed maintenance access panel. Gee, maybe I can fix this bucket of plaster bolts. He's not, on, not just a programmer, he, uh, also an engineer. Yeah, this is it. This fan belt thing came off the round thing it was on. Just a second. Apparently... Okay, she's all fixed. Let's go grab a burger. Apparently, fixing a spaceship is no more difficult than fixing a car. Too late you realize that you have no course laid in. The light engines kick in before you can override. You inform the two guys that light speed is now functional, but it's out of control. They're not overly pleased with this bit of news, either. Ah! We're gonna die! Oh no! Why did I get up this morning? Mommy! Careening blindly through space, your ship speeds towards a sizable black hole. Once within the gravitation of the black hole, there's no escape. You plunge into destiny. Hey, is that the black hole from the postcard? I guess so. Is this game gonna end on another cliffhanger like Space Quest 2? Sure hope not. The overwhelming force of the black hole draws your ship in. Helpless to do anything, and your, you and your passengers strap in and hope for the best. You enter a blacklist, blackness like no other you've ever experienced. All sense of time and speed are lost. Suddenly, a bright light becomes visible in the distance. It grows larger as your ship races toward it. Finally, you are hurled out of the blackness into a parallel universe. Yes, because that's what black holes do. They take you to parallel universes. You cut the engines to stop light speed as you near a seemingly habitable planet. Hey, I recognize that planet. It looks strangely familiar. You get one guess as to where he's gonna land. Right in front of the Sierra offices. Greetings, Earthling! We are the two guys from Andromeda, universally famous software authors. And I'm Roger Wilco, space age swashbuckler and all around nice guy. Sure you are. Hello, I'm uh, Ken Williams, president and founder of Sierra Online. So, you two guys are software authors, eh? What are your credits? Ever heard of Astro Chicken? No! Good. How about you two guys coming to work for me? Sounds great! How many Buckazoids does it pay? Buckazoids? Say, uh, Mr. Williams, do you need a janitor? No. 
As our space saga comes to a close, Roger, feeling a little left out, struts off to his ship with the satisfaction of knowing its mission has been accomplished. And they just send him away. They don't even thank him or offer him a cup of coffee. The two guys from Andromeda go on to create the Space Quest series of adventure games, reaping fame and fortune. They grow fat in their success and soon become burnt out and begin a drunken tailspin into oblivion. Sure. And so, we bid our hero a fond farewell as his ship once again bursts into light speed. Course unknown. The end! Of course, it's not really the end. Because there is, in fact, a sequel. There's, in fact, three more sequels. Well, that's uh, the third Space Quest game. Again, pretty short. I mean, I never really realized how short these games were until I started making videos of them. Still, Space Quest 3 is probably one of my favorite uh, entries in the series, tied with number 4. It's where the game really um, hits its stride with all the sci-fi references and wacky humor. And it's just a fun game. So, I have a lot of fond memories of this game. I think it's probably the first Space Quest game I ever played. But, we will continue this saga next time in Space Quest IV, Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers, which is also one of my favorites, and well worth waiting for. So, see you then!